Hello, today I'm just going to do a really simple um, uh, watercolour painting of so, uh, a little cottage scene. It's, uh, it's nothing elaborate, it's just a nice simple exercise just to get, um, just to get used to uh, painting trees and buildings next to trees. Um, first of all, I'm going, to wash a, uh, I'm going to wash a really simple sky in. Um, I'm, you, I'm going to be using this paintbrush uh, mainly today. It's an Escoda um, Perla um, size 12. But just to give me a, a chance to wash these, um, let's just, you know, just to wash this background, I'm going to use a big mop brush first. It's still from the Escoda range, but it's a, I prefer to use a mop brush to get the backgrounds in. So I'm just going to very lightly wash into the background there. I'm not going to go right up to the edges because I've not taped it down. And that way it should, the, the firmness and the dryness of the edges should hold this for us. So I'm just going to use a little bit of French Ultramarine in this with a little tad of Rose Opera. Just a little bit more Rose Opera I think. Just to give it a lovely light finish. There you go. That's all we really need to do on that and just let um, let gravity take the rest of the picture in for you. Uh, the, well, the rest of the sky, we've got to have to do this, this bit ourselves. So what I'm going to do to hurry that along, I'll just tap it down there and give it a little mooch around. There. And then just leave it down there until that bit's dried. <coughs> But I think what we might do is I want to get some faint trees in the background so they look like they're really in the distance. So what I think we'll do there is I'll just we'll do there is to use that um, pearl brush again now. I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's grey uh, with the background colour there. Just add a bit more water, more Payne's grey. And just in the background, down there, like that. I'm going to make sure it doesn't go into our roofs. So, I've got my special brush to stop things like that. That's my little kitchen towel. So, I'm just going to paint into there and lift out couple of these edges here and just make sure that doesn't go down there. Now this part here it's got a harsh edge. I don't want a harsh edge on this part here. I want a nice soft edge. So around there. Or even just fetch it down. So it's it's not a soft edge, I've actually brought it down um going lighter. We can put a soft edge at the top here, just there, just by adding a, just a little tad of water or a bit of damp brush to it, just over the top and it will soften that up for us. Now I'm going to make my brush this just so I give it a little rinse and give it a squeeze and it makes it thirsty. So it makes him thirsty and I'll lift up those little blobs of bead that is always very useful but when you don't don't have any more use for it just lift it out and carry on and see how that sky has painted itself there it's quite beautiful now then this part here, there's a little church in the background, so we use the same colour of this, so it's, it's just saying to the viewer, look, these objects are in the distance. So I'll just test it there, it's still quite damp. Um, 
I'm gonna just take away some of that dampness. I think that should be all right. So I'm gonna go up to the top there. I'm just testing the dampness as I go up. There you go. That should be all right. So we put the um, the spire on and a couple of side spires, little pointy bits. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to suggest that there's like a mist underneath there by fetching this down a bit just to shape it, just to shape that. Now with a little bit of damp brush and a bit of water in there I can pull that down you're actually going into the water onto the paint and dragging it down just go down there and drag it down and now it's like that you can make your other shapes oh, that's a fast car with other shapes there in the further distance and that's Perfect. I'm just going to suggest a little bit more detail at the top there. And there, put a little chimney pot there. Now, bring that down again. Remember, you wash your brush because you don't want any more pigment on there. You just put a bit of clean water in and pull it down to the next object otherwise you may leave a little harsh line you don't want to do that it needs to really just blend into each other so i think what we should do at this stage is just leave it to dry for a minute so i'll pause the camera and we'll come back right now that's completely dry and it's given us the right effect it's gone from a faint painting to an even fainter uh, painting there these areas are all very, very blurry, which is just what I wanted. Now, I'm going to, with the tip of this brush, that's what I love these, I love about these pearl brushes. They've got a real pointed tip on them. I'm using the same mixture as we've done with it, Sky, and just ever so gently, just coming down from the top of that tree. There we go. And these um, these tree trunks and branches and such, they're not painted in a really harsh colour. These are mainly the colour that we've used for this sky, and um, it's quite washy. It's always good to do that because you can always add another colour in later if you think it should be a little bit darker. You can do that. Now, there we go, we'll go up to there. Um, if I like to make my trunk a little bit wider at the bottom, I just press down on my brush and it brings more of the bristles to the to the paper. But down there, you see, and just... Uh -oh. where, the, uh, where the two branches meet, I do like to leave, put a, a, little, a little ball, a little nod or something. And it just shows that something's going on there, which is there might be some um, leaves in there or, or something like that. And I go right the way across with that. And right the way down there with this. You can just make this bit up as you go along, really. There's no hard, fast rules. And these are very much, they could be wintry trees, but we're not, we're going to have some nice bushy trees in front, so I will put a couple of leaves in there in a bit. Right. And I think that's, uh, I think that's okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to put another one here where this is very light there, just to contrast that.
So I'm just painting like little Y's, Y shape. Is in here really? I don't pull them, don't pull them all down to the same trunk. I like to put a couple of trees in there, a couple of trunks. Right now then, just to create a little bit of leaves in the back, just gonna use the side of this brush. Just over the top, just over the top there, and now we've got that part there. That's it. Bring some of that down, and now they've gone from a spindly tree to a tree with leaves, and bushy bits at the top. Yeah, just and we've not had to change our colour once yet we've stayed with that same sky colour which is a little bit of French ultramarine and a bit of the rose opera and this tree we've just created these trees were just created by adding only a little tad of Payne's grey to it you don't want to overpower it it needs to be basically a colour of the sky. See it's a little bit bare at the top there so I think I'll we'll do that. That's it and we're painting from our imagination today we're not painting from a scene or anything like that we're just painting from our own imagination. If you want your trees to be over there you could put them over there. It really doesn't matter it's your scene in fact, I think what we'll do, just to prove that we can do that, we'll put a tree here. One big branch there, another one there, a little knobbly bit in the bit, in the middle there, and and we'll fetch that bunch right away across there. He's been a little bit wayward in this tree. In your soul. Now, side of the brush, just the tip there, the side of the brush. In you go. Now, you just wanted that, didn't it? There you go, just hold that, hold that bit up there. There we go, it was our decision. Now if you want to fade these out a little bit on the bottom, you can always just use your brush to just dab those little branches there. Just gives them a little bit of a fade. There we go. Look at that. I'm going to do the same with that one here. Just add a bit of texture there to those, those branches and leaves. So we'll let that dry. It's not that wet anyway. So this part here is the church in the background we're going to go from left to right so let's start adding a little bit of color to this just make it up as we go along so we use this green first there we go that's a bit of sap green okay? and just add a little just a big old watch of green colour there. Try and leave little gaps in it because they are going to be helpful to us in a bit because we'll put little branches through there see. In fact I'll zoom in on this part now. Just be patient with me one minute please. And I'll zoom in to this. good with this uh, with this camera but there we go we can see what we're doing better now so this tree here we're just gonna fetch uh, once we've done that big bushy bit at the top we can just fetch some little spindly branches down there 
all the way down. And I see I put little triangles there just to say to me, don't forget to leave a bit of gap there, a bit of a gap, which I will do. And because I'm painting at an angle, this bead collects at the bottom. I paint that about 20, 20 degrees. Now we can just add a little bit of extra colour to this. Let's add a little bit of yellow to this. On this side. Just, just to see what it does. I've not done this before, so I don't know what it's going to do. It's all a guessing game. But that's the fun of watercolour. Yeah, that isn't that beautiful now we'll just add a bit of this sky color down the bottom we don't start putting big brown trunks in there we'll add a bit, little bit of blue and a little bit of the red and just add them into these areas just let the watercolor itself paint where these dark areas should be and now we can actually put a little bit of a put a bit of a groundwork there around it. And you know, so if you wanted to paint a tree on its own, that would be a, probably a, a good way of doing it. So we have done that little bit. Now I think we'll move on to this building here. This building is going to be a I like to try and contrast the colours as I'm moving along. So that's a greeny colour. Well, because it's green, it's a medium colour. I could go either cool or I could go warm. And because that's a medium, um, it's, it's quite a neutral colour. I can actually go either way. So I'm going to go warm here. So I'm going to use a little bit of um, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna in the same area. Same, I'm using the same little pot there. A little bit of orange, um, yellow there. So we're starting from the top. Just bring it down. We've got a little pointy roof there. Yeah. And across. Chimney pot there. Chimney pot there. And bring it down now then we could go all the way down there but it makes it very flat looking so i'm going to add a bit of color to this i'm going to add a little bit of rose opera to this just to um give us a little bit of variety with color as it's moving down it's getting a little bit warmer and warmer let's add a bit more color to that that's really Getting warm down here now. And into this purple. A bit of purple with that now. Now I'm going to be careful to paint around my little. I've got a little uh, small tree or bush there. Now this is a little um, wall that has got moving along at the side of this tree there we go let's leave a couple of gaps at the bottom of this wall for some um, grass to be pushing up at later on try to think about what you're going to do next so we're going to leave that to dry that's very nice <clears throat> that is a really nice colour that. In fact I'm going to add a little bit more of this colour to this. It's a bit of purple and rose opera. Just at the bottom. Just at the bottom there. And it's going to that's going to dry beautifully. i tell you what I'll do. I am going to do it. I'm going to put a little bit of Fetch Ultramarine with this Opera Rose. 
just drop a couple of little drops in there and I think we might even do the top of the chimney pot in this To get that to we need to have a just a damp brush and I'm just gonna pull that down and the same with this now once that colour's done its job for you you can you can mop that up a little bit there I want it to blend in nice and softly, that's why I've done it now. I'll lift some of that out. There we go. Just a little bit there. And I'm going to just soften this colour here by bringing a little bit of of this water down let it run down a little bit into this color i think we should leave that to dry but first of all i'm going to just mop up make me brush thirsty mop up these little beads of water beads of color mop them up and you can see the effect that that mixture of colour has had at the bottom there now if you think it needs a little bit more just add a bit of this darker colour if you want just at the very base of that, that area there we go I think that's very pretty there. I think we can get a nice yellow in there in a bit but in the meantime let's move on to this other building now all I'm doing is mixing together all those colours I've just used for this colour. You know, we're not sticking with the same old colours all the time. And we come down. Now we'll add a bit of this burnt sienna into here now. as if we've got an orchestra of colours just playing their tune across the page. Now we're just, we're just making sure, I don't want to do perfect round circles, I'd rather just have it a little bit jagged near there. Now what else, what colour could I put in there now? I'm going to put a bit of this purple colour in here and down there this is a lovely spring morning in this painting so come with these trees just recovering after winter just starting to their blossom and a bit of Ultramarine and upper rose just at the bottom there. We'll bring that part down because we don't want the building to look like it's falling. So it needs to be quite level that. Very nice, and we'll put a chimney pot up here. There we go, and a couple of chimney stacks. Just little lines, really, aren't they? And let that blend in here. I'm pushing that over here because the light's coming from this angle, so there will be shadows going across here anyway. So we'll just put soft shadows in up for the time being. Very soft shadows. 
I'm not quite happy with that. And now we'll move on to the third house there. Just put the shape of that in there. Now we have just burnt sienna, a bit of this yellow. We'll put that on. That gorgeous, like a thatched roof. That is golden. We've got a little bit too thick in here with this pigment, so but it doesn't matter. I can lift some of that out in a minute. So I'm just going to lift that out there and let the light shine through. There we go, that's a little bit better. It's good when little mistakes happen like this because Everybody makes mistakes. You can't be absolutely perfect all the time with the... Uh, well, I'm not saying that I'm perfect all the time, but what I'm saying is you, you can't always get it right. There's lots of room for er error when you're doing a watercolour painting. It's just knowing how to, how to treat it. Yeah, we're happy with that. Now this is it's starting to um, create a lovely bead of colour. So, but we don't need that anymore. So I'm just gonna make this brush a thirsty brush and let it drink up the pigment at the bottom. We still want to make sure that it's nice and even at the bottom. Make sure you do that. And then lots of little areas here. And don't forget, this is the first layer. The later layers just make it pop. So I think now we'll let that um, we'll let that dry a while. All right, back in a minute. Okay, so now we're back and. Let's put a couple of these trees in. Now I'm going to I want to make this this picture really pop. So I'm going to make up this colour, this um, upper rose and yellow, and a bit more upper rose and yellow, and it brings it up to this lovely red colour. So I'm going to put this red colour here. This uh, lovely tree with beautiful notes of red through there right. and I'm just painting with me the tip of my brush don't want to be slapping it all down there like that and now with the branches fall down there you can create that effect and suggest it with our brush like that just like that. Now as it gets further down, I'm just going to drink up some of that colour in a minute. Otherwise it won't do what I want it to do in a minute. It needs to be Still wet, but not with not too much pigment in there waiting to jump on my next colour. So no, we need to make this colour, the same colour, a little darker by adding a little bit of French ultramarine. And that paint will start to run down and create its own blend, which is perfect for what we want. So that's blending itself, so you can 
lift some of this stuff out now it's done its job and then a little bit of this red back into it if you think if you think your darker color has taken over a bit go back in with your red just at the top and pushing it down and your yes, most previous colour should be the dominant colour. It will do the work for you. Let's leave that. Now, I think we're going to go a little bit greeny over here. So, we'll... So I did say we're going to make that a yellow colour, didn't I? But I changed my mind. Before you all say, you said it was going to be yellow. Right, so now, bring this tree all the way down here. I will add some little yellow bushes on. Here we go, look at that. That's a beautiful colour, that. Let's add a bit of yellow to that. Bringing it down and just mixing it in. Bit of this green now. Bringing it down. Bit more stronger green. Just for these far edges and underneath. See, I'm just almost like randomly painting this. I like drawing, it's like drawing the picture with your paintbrush. Put a little line there, a little line there, and we'll just have a, a little bit of grass coming up here. Over here. Looks like the kind of place I'd like to live. And because this is dried, we can now go in here with our green colour. All the way along. Right, so we just carry on this bit of grass over there. And now, well, this is starting to dry fairly quickly. I think what we'll do is we'll we use the same mixture of that green and we'll go straight out right over here and we'll put a we'll create a bit of form so we've got a so we're not painting shadows we're painting shape so there's a difference between shadows and shape uh, shadows do create shapes uh, or the the illusion of a shape but this is i i like to put say two lots of shadows the first being the shape shadows like this and then later on i'll put the proper old deep old hairy scary shadows in yeah but this is just like a medium medium shadows just the form shadows yeah so it's a we use the same color to create this form area of the trees So if you just look at it as a shadow one to make some of this these things have a bit of shape and shadow two to create the darker areas of these trees so we just this is this side of the tree green here and just creating some little dotty areas here where the shape of this tree has got 
lots of little bushy bits there and always leaving a light at this side this side right so we're going to do the same with this other little tree now so we go back to the initial colour we used and just create some little areas of form you don't want it to look like a big flat area it needs to have some kind of shape to it some dimension to it so that should do for that now we're going to do the same now we're going to create a bit of interest over there so I'm going to just use a bit of blue a bit of like it's made a mixture here of different colors let's go for a, a little bit of a blue there and only very very light blue let's see what happens if we put a bit of this brown to it it creates like a gray then yeah so let's just try this over here because this is the shape is this the shadowed area of this side of the building so just only just coming up to the edge of this tree I don't want to create a great big white line around it because it looks flipping awful now but you come as far as you can up to it right. down here and it's got its own little wall here and we'll go under the eaves and this has got its wall on this side right now let's get a bit of green here for some grass that's growing up that wall and bring this down here now things always look better if they're darker at the bottom so I'm just adding a bit of Payne's grey here and that's probably a bit too what is that Just creating contrast different areas right, so that is very beady down here there's a lot of water here just call it pigment as I hoover it up just the right amount of paint pigment should be left on that area see how it's darker at the bottom and we'll do the same for this part here this area this side of this and under the eaves that's very important now this tree I'm going to say that this tree is cast in a shadow here so Just connect all that up at the back. Alright. Now here we've got we've got a window there. We have three windows. I'm, I want to have three windows. Like mullion windows or mullion windows, what you call it. Uh, putting those there. 
and I think they should have a window there, a window there, and one up there in those, and I think one, two there. This part here, he should have a window. starting to take shape now now while this lot's drying I'm going to get a bit of grassy area here now then for this I like to use a flat brush any old flat, flat brush will do the job and I'm going to use I've got a little fan brush as well. Fan brush is brilliant for this, actually. These little fan brushes. I got that from, I think it was the SAA, and it was one of the Terry Harrison uh, foliage brushes. But it's, it's lovely. So anyway, let's just create some colours for this. You don't want all the same colour green. Yeah, that just looks boring. So I'll have a couple of different warm colours there. And we've got this lovely rich rosy colour there. And we'll have our base green. Right. Now then. So with a flat brush first let's start with the flat brush we'll go for a warm one or warm colors and we're going to just create a little just little dots here a little we're using the same we're using the shape of the tip of the brush there yeah and then we'll move in with a different color a little warmer color Oh, a bit warmer there. Let's have a little play with a bit of green now. And you just do it quite random, as you will, the way that you like it. You think, oh, I like a bit of rosy colour there, I'll put a bit of rosy colour and then you say, oh I'll have a bit of greeny colour there let's have a bit of greeny colour and that's the fun of painting it's your scene, it's your picture if you mess it up, go in the bin it's not a problem, it's no crime, no one's seen it but if you're happy with it, the most important thing is having fun doing it. So I'm not putting too much here. I'm going to bring it down here. But let me just show you this, the uh, the fan brush. I'll just give it a little damp. Right? And if you use that, I'll just have to soak up some green, you can create little, I need a bit more water on there than that. You can create little little arches as you move away from that solid area. Just quite a solid area. That. So you just as it's getting closer to you, to you, you're getting more light scattered on it, and it lets you see it. The details more. Um, we just create a little divots. Is that? It's quite therapeutic, really. Just putting your little 
Put some bobs there. But if you prefer the, the flat brush, let's go back to flat brush. Yeah, have a bit of green there. And you can just you can go over there with that. Just different areas. Just different areas. Thing we do, neatly do, is put our shadows in. So with that, we're going back to our trusty old Skoda size 12 Perla brush, and I'm going to make a mixture here of different colours, and we'll have a bit of purple. We've got a bit of purple and a bit of green in there. A bit of paint grey as well. Let's put a bit of this uh, red colour in there. So we've just got a bit of a mixture of colours now then. Oh, just about a drip that was. Just the top. Just the tips first of the chimney pots. If you want to feel a little bit adventurous, you can put a little TV aerial in it. That's nice. Anyway. Right, let's just create some shadow. Now I'm just using the tip of my brush again. And just to show that this roof is quite uneven, I'm not making it a straight line like that. There we go. Now just underneath the eaves here. And the top of that window. Just the tops of the windows now. Top there, top there, top, top, top. Top, 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 top. Right. And we've got these lovely dark shadows underneath the eaves. Just brings it all together. Just at the top I'm going to do here. Not too much, because that's a little bit far back that, so it's got a little bit more mist in front of it. Now we can... Close this area in here. There we go. And here's where we put our shadowy bits under there. This is our number two shadow. Just where the, the trunks meet the leaves. Just a few. You don't have to go too crazy. You don't want it all too dark. Just so it tells its story. There we go. I think it's told its story now. Uh, just a little bit on this side. wall is just creating some dark shadows there and I think we'll put a little window there I think it just needs it and maybe just here so I think we can call that finished this painting will actually be for sale on my website as will prints of this uh, this painting um, I'm just going to sign that now and um, Jackson well thank you very much for watching I do hope you enjoyed this I hope you learned something you picked something up from it and um, that you create your own little cottage scenes as well so uh, yeah, please come and visit me on my website, which is www.somersetartist.com. And thanks for watching.